Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I'm going to be doing my September wrap up today. It's a wee bit late, um, but I wanted to share it with you. I haven't read loads, I have to say. So yeah, there's a few books I'm going to talk to you about today. So the first one I have is Lowborn by Kerry Hudson, which is a story about a woman who grew up in um, working class Britain, but grew up really poor. And she is revisiting the places that she lived and sort of looking at how they've changed or if they've changed and reflecting on her life growing up. Um, this one is just as good as everyone says it is and I would say it's quite an essential read if you do live in the UK. Um, yeah, really, really, really enjoyed that one. And the next one I have is Sex by Numbers by David Spiegelhalter um, and this is like a deep dive into statistics about sex. Um, it's full of graphs and like key line stats and it's basically talking about like what is normal sexuality for humans, is there a normal sexuality for humans and what is everyone else like doing. Um, I would say that this is a really stats heavy book. I would class this as being like half an exploration of stats and half an exploration of sex. So you have to kind of like both. Um, I have to say I found a little bit like by the end of like okay <laughs> I think I've had enough by now um, but I did find it quite interesting I've read quite a lot of bits out if you're really interested in knowing what other people are getting up to or you're interested in stats I think you'll like this one next is another non-fiction in fact I'm going to go through all the non-fiction first I'm going to pile them up okay so the next one is Clearing the Air by Tim Smedley um, and this is on my like run of ecological books it's probably how I'd describe them um, and this is speaking about air pollution and um, it's kind of like one man's journey from not knowing anything about air pollution to trying to understand like how it affects people and where is it worse and what can we do um, yeah so he he basically has a young daughter and when she's born um, he very shortly afterward finds that the, the street they walked down had like one of the worst air pollution ratings in the world so he took his newborn daughter through one of the most polluted areas um, in the world on that particular day and he becomes a little bit obsessed by it in, in quite an interesting way um, I think that this specific topic isn't the one that floats my boat particularly I think specifically air pollution is maybe like a little bit too niche for me um, but I didn't know that much about it I didn't know how it was measured or what people are trying to do to control it or quite um, how much control there is in terms of local populations controlling air pollution I I'd kind of assumed it was like because I live from somewhere where, where that's not really a problem um, I'd always kind of assumed well if you live in a city you're kind of stuck and that's just what it is um, but he was talking about like measures you can take like even as simple as building like a row of trees that can lower air pollution in the area um, if it's near like a road or something and I thought that was quite interesting because uh, I thought it was kind of some all-consuming smog I think was how I pictured it and I didn't realise there were so many things we could do to try and prevent but also uh, limit like the effect. Um, yeah so ag again I would say um, this is one that is very much on that kind of like a span of green books that I've been reading lately and I did like it I just think I want something broader right now I'm not into it enough to like be really fascinated yet by the specifics so interesting but I kind of wanted a broader image of it. The next one is one I picked up um, I think it was Mercedes who'd gone around and found these um, like American hardcover books that were like fairly cheap someone went up in the library sale or something but anyway I think I'm pretty sure it was her who talked about a false report um, and this has just been made into a Netflix series as well it's unbelievable so if you haven't checked that one out, it's about a young girl who um, was raped in her apartment and she t goes to tell the story to the police officers and they don't believe that she was raped and she recounts her story and says that she lied um, but we soon find out that she doesn't, she hasn't lied um, and this is true crime but also like a critique of the systems in which um, victims were being asked to be put like put themselves on trial rather than anything else and the pressure that the police would put onto the women who'd um sort of suffered these violent assaults um yeah and it was really riveting but quite scary um i i think if you're not in a great place with this kind of content um it's quite there's quite a lot of detail here um but i found it of such a quick read in terms of just 
the pacing was amazing, the way they put the stories together were just, they flowed really nicely and you got the sense of telling not just um, this individual girl's story but the, the stories of lots of other people and their experience and I just thought it was really really well done. Um, this was originally an article that was published which won a Pulitzer so this is the long form based on that original article. Um, yeah, uh, I would say I haven't watched Unbelievable, I watched the first episode, but probably you only need to do one. So if you've watched the series, this probably won't give you that much more and vice versa. So when I watched the series, it was kind of in as much detail as the book. And I thought, mm, I've done this. So I only watched the first couple of episodes and then decided um, I didn't need to do it again. Um, but I did really like it. And yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing and you're more of a booky person than a film person with that kind of content then um, I do think it's really really well written. And then the last non-fiction I have is a collection of essays which is Coventry by Rachel Cusk and I really loved this. Um, I think she draws like a really fine line between fiction and non-fiction and um, I've only read the first of her outline trilogy but that felt very similar like it could almost be true and this feels like it's the sim a similar kind of feel, like you're not really sure whether she's writing fiction or or not. Um, the first essay is about drivers on country roads, but it goes into themes like motherhood and writing and time to oneself and relationships changing and the sense of like stability you have in your life. And I just absolutely adored this one. Um, and actually I'm going to do a giveaway for this one. So I have an extra copy to give away um, to one of you guys. Um, international this time so just leave a comment down below if you're interested in, in receiving a copy of Coventry. And then I have three fiction, um, so yeah not loads this month, um, but the first one is Baby Teeth by uh, Josie Stage and or Zoe Stage and this is a book about, it's kind of like creepy child thriller. Um, I didn't think it was like amazing but I read it really quick and I enjoyed it a lot so um, it is essentially about a mum who thinks that their child is um, dangerous or bad or like rotten in some way and um, it's her relationship with this little girl and the little girl is the mum believes in manipulating the dad who doesn't believe the mum that there's anything wrong. Um, I think it's just like quite a pacey, thrillery, horrory book and I really liked it. I just sped through it. I read it in like one night and then the morning of the day after and yeah. I did enjoy it. It was not anything particularly special, but I did race through it and enjoy it. And then the next one I have is Paradise Rot um, by Jenny Haval, and I spoke about this one in my Creepy Books recommendation. Um, it's a really weird little novella um, about a girl who moves, moves country and is living in this like B&B type place, waiting for this flat to turn up, and a flat shows up with this girl and the relationship they have and the home they build is very strange and rotten and it, this is a really hard book to describe. I did talk about it I think probably more eloquently than I am doing today. I'm a little bit um, out of touch with filming I think today. I'm not, I'm not, I feel like I'm speaking in the way I, where I would normally be able to. Um, it's short and just creepy and makes you feel quite uncomfortable. I think I probably would class this as horror, but like literary horror. Um, yeah, I really, I really did like it if I found it a bit weird. So I really liked the process of reading it, but I kind of left it like, I don't know what, what to think about this next. So yeah, that is Paradise Rock. And then the last book, unfortunately, was a little bit of a flop for me. I thought I'd like it more than I did. And that is The Lost Art of Sinking by Naomi Booth. Um, which again, I think I saw in Mercedes' video, and that's why I picked it up. Um, it's a story about a girl who basically joins in this kind of teenage game of trying to make themselves faint, but for her it becomes more than just this like one-off teenage girl's game, and the sense of fainting or going away and disappearing becomes quite addictive to her. Um, I really like the premise, I just wasn't overly invested in the actual book. I read it and kind of felt like I was slogging through it, um, which I found a bit disappointing um, because I kind of wanted, I, w I don't know quite what I wanted, but I didn't quite get what I wanted from it. I felt like maybe it was a bit too short or maybe there weren't enough like solid plot points in it, but I just got left feeling 
like it had kind of missed the point slightly, which was a bit disappointing because I thought I was going to really enjoy that one. Yeah, so that that is that's everything that I've read in September. So not very much um, for, for a whole month, but that's okay. Um, I feel like I'm going to read quite a lot more in October because I have a whole week off, and whilst I've I've committed to doing other things like in the week. Um, I'm still thinking I'm going to have way more free time than I've had in September. We've had a really busy month, um, really busy few months actually. But it's still nice to catch up with you guys and let me know in the comment down below if you're interested in winning a copy of Coventry. Let me know if any of the other books are interested to, interesting to you, like whether you've read them or you want to read them. And I'll see you guys again soon in another video. Bye bye. <laughs>